Hello lovely humans and welcome back to another instalment in my Jack Skellington meets Gentleman Jack cosplay attempt. To wit, I will be making all of my accessories. That means making a bat cravat, somehow, a very tall stand collar and a top hat. Easy stuff. I think I'm going to start with the top hat. The, the materials that I have to make this I was given for free because someone offered me a huge amount of millinery supplies that she wasn't going to take with her when she moved to Australia. I've never used any of these before. I've never made a hat. I have watched a single instructional YouTube video and read a single instructional blog. I have, out of cardboard and a large candle jar, created a hat block of sorts. I have no idea if that will even vaguely work. The tall stand collar should be relatively straightforward. I'm still not sure at all how I'm actually going to make my bat cravat. Let's Let's, let's start. Let's start the thing and just hope it goes okay, because that's usually what I do and it, it goes all right, so let's do that. So I covered my homemade hat block in cling film and laid my buckram over top, lining up the grain with the center front and center back of the hat block and using pins to secure it in place. I then steamed the absolute bejesus out of it. smoothing out everything I could and folding over whatever I couldn't, then pinning all of that in place as well. I followed the same process to block a brim for my hat using a small wooden bowl as a brim block. Please do not use this as any kind of resource for hat making. I do not know what I'm doing and will link in the description to resources I found that will actually be helpful. While my buckram cooled down, I marked up and cut pieces of black silk for my cravat and attempted to hem it on my machine, which absolutely trash didn't go so hot, so instead I turned the edges and hemmed them by hand using a long running stitch, but making sure only teeny tiny stitches would be visible from the right side. I have just spent well over two hours, well over, hemming a long bit of silk by hand because my machine decided that sewing it would be sacrilegious and impossible, apparently. I am so grumpy. <laughs> Did not want to spend like two hours doing running stitch in black thread on black silk to just finish the edges. On the upside, I've discovered that if I put the black silk over a white piece of paper that has a black pattern on it, I can see the black lines through the silk. I might just print a line drawing of that to essentially trace from so that I don't have the pressure of like drawing a good bat. The hat blocks are... God, I'm tired. I was about to say the hat blocks are hatting. It was really fun. Bleed in hell. Millinery buckram is a good time. It's really entertaining and really fun to work with, although I did burn my thumb. But that's my fault because I touched the iron. Not intentionally. The hat block pieces are chilling at the minute. I'm really happy with the top hat, like the top part of it. I'm not quite sure how the brim's gonna go, but I guess we'll just have to see. Hamish said something about fish and chips, so I'm gonna go investigate. Hello. It is not the next day. It is a week later because I had a throat infection, which you can probably hear because I'm still recovering. And also, yes, my sewing table is significantly taller because I was sick, of leaning forward and hurting my back. It is time to get back to doing the things. While I felt too ill to talk to a camera, I did not feel too ill to do anything at all. I have drawn the bat for the bat cravat. I used what I could see through the silk to trace a rough outline in the bronzy, goldy colour sharpie. I then looked at an actual copy of the drawing that I could see better so that I could pick out the various highlights and really start refining the shape of the bat, making it look one, more bat-like, and two, more visually interesting. And then kind of went in with the goldy bronzy colour again to add more texture and variation and visual interest. And I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I think it looks really cool. I'll need to do some playing around with it to figure out the best way of tying it, but that's okay. I can do that. Next on the agenda, what is next on the agenda? 
figuring out how to attach the two pieces of hat that I have and cover them in fabric. Let's start getting into that, shall we? I removed all the pins from my buckram creations and removed them from their blocks. I stitched the folds on the top hat piece into place so it would keep its shape and then used some chalk to mark out an even line or even enough to cut along the brim piece and the main hat piece as well. I cut along all of those chalk marks and then I clipped along the brim piece to create more flexibility where the brim would meet the body of the hat. I popped the brim into place, stitched around the circumference to secure it and sewed on some buckram bias tape to cover the brim's raw edge. I have a little top hat skeleton. The brim was a bit more like upright than I wanted, so I stretched it out a little. So now I just need the stuff to put on the skeleton. I've cut out a circle of my pinstripe wool and I'm now trying to figure out making some bias tape because otherwise doing this brim is going to be an absolute nightmare. I also need to make a lining and decide if I'm going to put anything like ribbon on this because I haven't decided that yet. There would be a way of hiding the joins between the binding and the side bits, which I also need to do figuring about. Yeah. So to preserve my precious fabric, I took the smallest square I could and attempted for the first time ever to make continuous bias binding. I then mocked up a pattern to cut out of my wool fabric to sew onto the hat, but very wisely decided to give it a try before cutting it out of the real fabric. Okay, I don't have my side pieces yet because I made a mock-up of the outer section by making a lining. My overall thoughts, it's a bit janky and a bit baggy, which is fine for the lining, but I'm not happy about that for the actual outer piece. I think I'm basically going to make a tube that I know is the correct size to go around this edge. Anchor it and then basically fold it in almost like making a box pleat because I think that's the best way of getting it perfectly flush without painstakingly measuring all of this with some kind of like, I've forgotten what the thing is called. They're called, they're called calipers. Measuring it with calipers, which would have been funny if I could remember the word. Anyway, I'm gonna go do some hand stitching to make that bit all happen. Calipers. Yeah. I started feeling bright and fresh the next day and carefully marked and cut out my fabric for the tube to cover the outside of the hat as precisely as I could. I also took some time to press under the edges of the wool on the bias tape I made to turn it into bias binding and well. I've made some discoveries this morning. One of which is that trying to take a quarter inch turn on drapey wool on the bias is a living nightmare and will make you want to throw your hot iron through a window. So I've changed my system a bit. Instead of taking a turning and using bias tape to cover the edges of the side pieces and the lining, I'm going to use a turning in the side pieces and the lining to hide the edges of this which may end up posing its own set of uh, challenges. There's some problem solving that needs to be done. Fandangling, collar fogling, if you will. But essentially that means I'm gonna be doing a bit more hand sewing earlier than I expected because there's not much point in making my handy dandy little tube for the outside to dress the outside of this hat skeleton if I need to put that on over top of this. This is taking longer than I expected it to. And I got very grumpy with myself last night, was like, how could I not have known that this would take so long? And Hamish very fairly made the point that I've never made a hat before, so how would I know? It is literally not possible for me to because I have no experience of my own to draw upon. I'm enjoying it though. I quite like making hats. I need to attempt to get back to pinning. I did also burn part of this binding while I was trying to press it. So I have a very sad little wrinkled and literally breakable scrap of wool. Fear the iron, definitely the lesson for today. I am going to continue my pinnings and then do some hand sewings. I'm probably explaining this badly. I'm tired. I nearly cried about ironing, so clearly I'm tired. I'm just trying my best today, all right? And we'll just do whatever I can manage. Pinnings and hand sewings. That bit, get, mate, get off. Sorry, didn't mean to be that aggressive towards, towards the wall scrap. Can you just, get, no. I'm very tired. But hey, 
my hair looks cute, so it's not all bad. I'm gonna go pin some stuff and do some hand sewing. So I pinned the bias tape over the entirety of the hat brim and had just enough to turn under an overlap where the two ends of the tape met at the back of the hat. I secured that with some hand felling around the very edge of the brim. Then I pinned that fabric in place around the inside of the hat where the lining would cover it. We have the brim tape pinned and such, and I have created and pressed a little tube of the pinstripe fabric to go on the outside of my hat skeleton and affix to it. What with the sewing room being the coldest room in this house, my joints are quite grumpy. So I'm gonna go to a cozier room, put some things on in the background to watch while I hand stitch the inside of the brim fabric. Stitch the lining in place and add this fabric. So I completely lost track of time and it is half one in the morning. It takes quite a lot longer to make a small top hat than I thought it did, but ain't that just the way? It's not very far off. I have attached my outer fabric, put four lines of stitching down the side to anchor it in place. I've now folded over the excess. I will fell all of those in place. There's a little bit of messiness on the inside of the brim that I think I'm just gonna make like a little piece of silk bias tape, cover that up. Or I might try out some of the ribbons I have lying around, see if they'll do the job, get me with bored this time. I need to figure out how I'm going to make sure this will stay on my head. I was thinking of just adding some little loops that I can then slide hair clips through to clip it to my hair, but I'm still pondering that. That might have to wait a bit. And wait, it absolutely did, because right after my throat infection cleared, I got the flu. But I finished the hat off with some stitching, added ribbon to it, made my tall collar stand out of linen and interfacing, and do not have any footage of any of that because the SD card the footage was on seems to have inexplicably vanished into the ether. I did, however, manage to fix that shirt I made too small and did not think I would be able to salvage. Accessories. They took quite a bit longer than intended. This has been a long time coming. It was really fun making a hat. I think I'm probably gonna make more in future actually because I did genuinely really enjoy it. Millinery buckram is really fun to play around with. It's kind of halfway between sewing and sculpting. But yeah, I had a good time on this. I am going to be working next on the tailcoat. I really need to get my butt in gear for that. If you did enjoy this and you want to check out what else I'm going to be doing with the Gentleman Jack Skellington project, there is a playlist of all of these videos. If you'd like to keep hanging out and check out the other stuff I get up to, that would be super cool. If you think other people might like this, maybe share some of my stuff around. That would actually really help me out. But whether you decide to keep hanging out or not, I hope Everything is okay in your world, and I will see you guys next time. Bye. I mean, this is essentially halfway between Johnny Depp as Ichabod Crane and Willy Wonka. Not that I'm unhappy about that look. It's a statement. Not an everyday one, but not a bad one. They're called. My brain keeps saying speculum, but I know that's not what it's called. Calipers. More hand stitching. Eek. Falling over sideways.